Hey everybody, it's Terry D Lab, and I've got Scott here. He was actually out doing a little swap meet shopping and ran across a jewel. So you initially thought that you bought a signal generator, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out that you got what? Uh, it is a uh, signal tracer. Yeah. Uh, from an antique shop. Yeah, it was the model 202, and this is made by Precision Electronics. So when Scott got it, he had other plans for this device. And when I saw it, I was like, oh no, oh no, that's a rare bird. I have never seen one of these signal tracers. So cosmetically, it's in pretty decent shape. And it actually has the magic eye tube, which is very cool on a signal tracer. The probes are missing. So what we want to do is an initial power up. I told Scott, the last thing you want to do is plug it in, right? That'd be very bad. So we're going to open it up, inspect it. If it has the old paper filter caps, we're going to get them out, change them, bring this guy up on a Variac and see if it operates. And if it does, dude, this is a keeper, okay? This is like your vintage scopes and all that. Everybody needs a signal tracer on the bench, and you happen to find the coolest the rare one. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's get her apart. All right, I've removed the rear screws. Scott's going to pull this baby out of the case, and you guys are going to see it as we see it. It's not scripted, so, scripted. dude, there could be like a big old nasty mouse in here. It could be full of money, you know? A lot of guys stashed shop money. Okay, so yeah, I've got the front loose. Actually, just... There you go. Yep, yeah. pull that back. I got it. It's like a, say a, <laughs> say a white residue. Yeah. Yeah. Something, uh, yeah. Something didn't go well. In so there. there is some uh, white residue inside of the cabinet. So I'm guessing something let loose underneath. It does have the original filter cap. And there's your power transformer. This is probably some type of an output transformer. Oh no, it's two leads. Nope, there's leads on the other side, so I'm not sure what that is, because this is the output transformer for the speaker. Alright, so let's kind of turn it up on its face and see what blew up. Huh. Well, it's I don't in this see... area, so... Yeah, I don't see any evidence of anything blowing up, but man, she's clean inside. You know, Mr. Filter Cap's got to go, some woolly boogers up there. But... It looks pretty good. So what we need to do before we apply power, we'll buzz out the primary of the power transformer, make sure it's not cooked, and then we'll change the filter cap and bring this thing up and see if we can get any life out of it. The other thing we noticed was uh, one of these was really stiff. It's this one. This yeah. control is super so, stiff. So yeah. let's try to get a little lube in that so yeah. it can turn freely and we don't break it. But all in all, man. It's a cool find. All right, so the first thing we need to check is the primary, that power transformer, because if it's open, there's no reason to go any further. So I was able to free up this uh, wattage switch. It's also the AC on. So grab the two-prong cord there, yep. put it across our ohm meter. We're on the uh, auto range scale. So let's see what we got. Look at that. Oh. It's a little dirty, the prongs. Yeah, a little corrosion on there. Come on, meter. Hmm. Yeah, I'm showing something, but we're getting intermittent connections because of the crud on it. But at least it looks like the primary of the transformer is alive. So now we need to change out. There's a 10 microfarad cap here. He's an old cruster. Okay. And of course, those woolly boogers. The main filter cap, which looks like it's a three section cap. And this one is rated 60, 20, and 10, all at 350 volts. So we'll see if we can find something that will either replace this or we can put a terminal board and mount it underneath. And then, you know, I feel safe powering up. All right, I think we figured out uh, the mystery of the intermittent 
primary resistance on the transformer. You can see I've got about 49 ohms or so, but if I flex the power cord, yeah, it's yeah. on and off, yeah. So we yeah, got a bad yeah. connection right here yeah. at the restraint. We're going to have to repair that, obviously, yeah. before we power it up. But either way, it looks like the power transformer winding is there. So we're going to change the caps. All right, we've got our two terminal boards mounted for the installation of the new filter capacitors. This side is ground, and you can see I've roughed up the chassis so we can solder that to the chassis. But you need a very aggressive soldering iron to do that task. And what is that? Relax, light up an old ghoul. <laughs> a lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. Yeah. A lot of ghouls come from Portugal. Snozoramus! <laughs> There's our new filter caps installed. So we have the ground runner behind. And this is all of our positives, so we're pretty much going to remove these leads and swing them over to the filter caps. We'll have to either replace these resistors or if these check good, we can put those over on the terminal board too. Okay, so the new filter caps are installed, got all the wiring complete. You can see I abandoned the old filter cap, clipped those leads off, but we still are using the grounds. So now we're going to move over replace the AC cord and add a fuse because this thing never had one. All right, I believe we're at the point where we can safely fire it up. We now have a fuse in line with the replaced power cord. Filter caps are installed. We inspected the unit for connections, made sure nothing looks out of the ordinary. So I think we can throw it on the Variac and see what it does. So we're gonna bring up the signal tracer using my Variac for the initial power up. We've put in new filter caps and a fuse. So what we're gonna do is just watch this AC current. We don't care about the voltage right now. We're just gonna creep up on it and make sure we don't see any spikes in that current. And hopefully we'll see some activity over here in a minute. So we're at 60 volts. There's about 100 volts. Now I'm looking to see if tube filaments are coming on, and yes they are. So that tells me we have no shorts, we have no problems. So let's just go ahead and apply full voltage to the little guy and see if we get any audio out of it. Okay, so here we are, full power. And hopefully you'll see that magic eye tube come on. Am I framed okay? Is that better? There. Okay. Look. Look at there. Mm. She's glowing. Okay. So that's a good sign. Alright, so we're going to do audio. I hear a hiss. Mm -hmm. And of course, the magic eye was responding. Did you see that? This switch is a little dirty. Yeah. But it's working. So the next thing, let's clean that switch. And let's get my audio generator and inject a tone. See if it comes out of the tracer. All right, we're going to use my leader audio generator as an input. And there's the tone. There's the attenuator. You can see the eye deflecting. Oh, there. See there? Mm -hmm. There we go. Now we're getting some output. So the tracer is working. I'm hearing a little bit of distortion, so maybe we'll want to check the tubes. But it looks like the Model 202 is about ready for your bench, man. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, it was a good project. We got the old precision working again, and I think Scott's actually going to keep it. With a little training yep. from D Lab Electronics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good project.